Hi, I'm Paul Connors. I'm a product manager with Mersin. And as Danny said, I'm going to go over Get Big Faster, how you can scale like the world's largest retailer, just regardless of your size. So this first chart here is pointing out one of our sellers that started with us in 2009, taking advantage of online marketplaces. And you can see their growth really ramped up. But I won't go back there and point, but about halfway through, you can see that the second year, outside of the holiday spikes, really looks like a carbon copy of the first year. So their sales picked up. We know there was tremendous online growth over that period, but they topped out. And the theory that we had was that their own infrastructure and ability to fulfill orders was holding them back from everything they could do online. So here's what we'll cover. I have a memory device called the 321 on Mercent to help you remember what we do. I'll talk a little bit about the world's largest retailer and what they're able to do versus what you can bring into play. I'll show how you can do it too, but why your risk in doing so is much lower than the world's largest retailer. And then I'll tie into how Mersin can help you achieve this. So the 321 on Mersin, again, just a memory device to help you recall what we do. We have three values we provide to our selling partners. We keep them visible, competitive, and profitable. Visible in that we take their order and product information they integrate to us and take it out to all the best selling online channels. Competitive with tools like repricing, with tools like tying them into strike through pricing, marketing tools like eBay daily deals, and make sure that they are winning the best percentage possible of their products on those channels. And then lastly, we keep them profitable by providing the data and analytics so that they can tell which decisions are bringing results, which decisions they need to adjust. Second part of the three, two, one is the two. And this is the two ways that we deliver these three values. The first is through Mercant Retail. It's our award-winning software as a service platform. And then the second way is depicted by the picture on the right, which is Mercant Performance. And these are our data experts who supplement Mercant Retail with their insight and expertise. And then lastly, this is all powered by one integration, and that's the one out of the three, two, one. Your product and order data integrated to Mercant in a way that we're able to reach out to all possible channels. So, you can take advantage of all this, but as we've seen for one seller from that original chart, they still topped out. Uh, they sped up to this point and then topped out. So, I want to take a second to look at Walmart and the difference in what they have in place and how successful they've been versus what you might be able to accomplish. First thing they have is selection price and availability. They've brought together a ton of products. They're voracious about lowering prices and they put these products in places where people can get to them. Secondly, they have a small variety of channels to reach different consumer segments. They have Walmart for pick up whatever you need. They have Sam's Club for the more upscale bulk purchaser. And then they have this huge scaled infrastructure they've invested in over time. And you know, these pictures just depicting the scale of their delivery warehouse infrastructure. And with that infrastructure and with the cash they've been able to pull in, they've expanded into a global fulfillment empire, uh, either through taking over existing marketplaces or expanding the Walmart name. There are a couple of red areas I want to point out on the map where things didn't go quite so great. Uh, Germany is red and South Korea is red, and these are places where Walmart made a sizable investment and ended up having to pull back. But regardless of those two uh, missteps or things that didn't turn out so well, Walmart's been tremendously successful. They're the third largest public corporation in the world. They're the largest private employer with over two million employees, and they are the world's largest retailer. And the four things that we've identified are price selection availability, channels to reach multiple segments, scaled fulfillment infrastructure, and global fulfillment logistics. And you can do the exact same thing. So we've had for some time what we can call the retail cloud, and this is where you can have this traffic selection, visibility of your products across multiple channels, and really, once you can get that product and offer information out to them, you can drive the traffic that you normally wouldn't be able to reach these people in the old brick and mortar world. So this is not new news, but it is available to you. And with an integration to Mersin, you know, how Mersin comes into play is we take this product and offer information, get it in the optimized format for each of these channels. And you do have multiple consumer segments. If you were here for a panel earlier, you know, each of the online marketplaces targets a little bit different uh, segment. They don't overlap completely. In the upper left there, you can see the Amazon family that's on Prime that does everything, gets their videos, gets most things shipped to them. In the lower left, you can see eBay, which has more of a fashion focus than they used to. And then on the upper right, you can see Sears, where really they have some big ticket purchases come through for do-it-yourself home projects. 
So what's been in place for some time is that you have price selection and availability and channels to reach multiple segments, but the bottom two items are still a barrier to getting your fulfillment up to where it could be to maximize all the potential on those first two items and to line up with what Walmart has to offer. But now over the last couple years, this fulfillment cloud has been created through FBA through Amazon, FBA export through Amazon, uh, fulfillment by Sears through Sears Commerce Services, and then the eBay Global Shipping Program. And the original model for these things was the holiday spike, that instead of investing for the infrastructure for your highest demand point in the year, you could step in and supplement during that time of year with a variable cost through one of these programs. And really that's why you can call it the fulfillment cloud. You just use the parts you need, but you don't have to build the whole thing. So during that spike, you might use FBA or fulfilled by Sears. But now you can look at it in addition to the holiday spike as year over year growth, before you make a capital investment decision, feel it out with these services to see if this higher volume is going to be sustained before you actually make a huge investment. And something that's held people back from taking advantage of these programs is tax nexus and the concern that they might be establishing a, present, a presence in additional states. But the Marketplace Fairness Act, which is on its way, is going to make that less of a concern. It's actually going to make the taxing, the taxing layer uh, even for all the marketplaces. The global coverage provided by the global aspects of FBA export and eBay global shipping are pretty impressive. Uh, rather than a map, I've just put the names of all the places that are supported by these two programs. Amazon on the left is if you're going to use FBA and don't have any concerns about doing business with Amazon from a competitive or branding standpoint. And then eBay on the right is something where you don't actually have to stock the inventory with them. You ship to a collection point in Kentucky. What these things do, number one for your buyers, they get an extremely accurate shipping and fulfillment cost because these marketplaces know their ultimate delivery location. You don't have to get into the business of currency conversion or international paperwork. It really remains a domestic uh, transaction from your standpoint. So now we can look at the last two items of the four things that we've seen that have made Walmart a, the world's largest retailer. Scaled fulfillment infrastructure, someone else has built it, you get to take advantage of it. Global fulfillment logistics, the same thing. You don't have to specialize in international trade. But here's your advantage. If you think back to Germany on the map and Walmart's expenditure there in terms of real estate, retaining employees, training them up, letting them go, uh, it was quite an investment. Walmart does have an online marketplace that does very well now, so we're looking historically at their brick and mortar. But your risk to test your products out in Germany or any other country is really a variable cost. And if it doesn't work out and you don't gain traction, you can pull back without that huge capital investment. So how do you make it happen? Well, getting back to the 321 on Mersin, that single integration to Mersin gives us the product and offer data that we need to reach out to all of these channels and also take advantage of the fulfillment networks that have come into play for Amazon and eBay and Sears. Here are the things I'd like you to take away. Walmart built this advantage through capital investment and not because they were foolish about it, it just was the time and the place for it. A lot of this has come into play in the last couple of years. The retail and fulfillment clouds offer you the same advantage without the risk. Your single integration with Mersin opens this all up to you. So I'm here today, our sales team is here today. If you have any questions about getting this into motion for you, let us know. Back to the original chart where our sellers saw great sales and then capped out for a couple of years due to their fulfillment infrastructure. The blue arrow is pointing to September of 2011 when they activated through FBA with us. And you can see how things took off with that barrier removed. Um, and there are more tools available now than there were two years ago. So thank you very much for your time. I'm available after the talk for any questions. Love to give you my card. Thanks, everybody.